Hello, I'm Justin Murray. This is the second session here where we're going to demo some of the NVIDIA Private AI or VMware Private AI with NVIDIA technology. And I'm a product marketing engineer from Broadcom. So what, what are we going to see here? Well, I'm going to motivate this from an application. What, what does the end user see? Um, what, is the, what is the data scientist creating for the business users in the company? So we're going to look at that first. And that, surprise, surprise, is a RAG application with a chatbot at the front end. We're going to see that here. Then we're going to see the building blocks that are sitting behind that, the, the virtual machines, deep learning virtual machines, which have toolkits in them to serve the needs of the data scientists. Then I'm going to automate the provisioning of those using the ARIA automation tool that we mentioned. And finally, we're going to look inside the GPU and see what's going on there. And these are recorded to try and keep me on time. I know you'll, you'll have questions, but I can pause them uh, if I need to. There's been a lot of discussion of containers versus VMs. Does this, is this solution primarily containers or primarily VMs or a combination of both? Or? It's a combination of both. You can, you can think of a, a, a VM as a node in a Kubernetes cluster on which you run pods which have containers within them. So um, when we deploy a Kubernetes cluster on VMware, what we're deploying are VMs that are pod capable and pods are collections of containers. So containers and VMs fit very naturally together. Now, if, you, if you're asking, how do we ship all this? The NVIDIA components are shipped as containers. They can run, be run using Docker as individual containers. And they're also microservices. They can fit into Kubernetes very easily. So, so it's a combination of containers and VMs. So you mentioned the Triton inference server. Do you have a solution similar to that from a VMware private AI perspective that's not NVIDIA or? Uh, we've, we've done a lot of work with open source uh, um, servers. VLLM uh, is one example of that. And, and there's, a, there's a deployment guide that you can get from us that talks about that open source architecture. But as far as you know, customer situations where NVIDIA is involved, Triton is the clear winner there. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So I mentioned the first application is this chatbot. So what we're doing here is we've taken a Llama 2 7B model, Llama 2 7B chat, brought it down onto the, uh, onto the uh, customer's premises, and we're firing up an application, a very simple chatbot here, and we're asking, what is Llama index? Chris mentioned this earlier. This is a very recent development in, data, in the data science world, in the LLM world, and this model doesn't have the answer. So we've got a problem. There are certain pieces of, uh, of knowledge that are only known uh, outside of the model. And so what I'm doing here is I'm loading in a piece of data into the vector database via a file that tells the vector database what Llama index is, actually. And then I ask the same question, but I turn on my RAG. I turn on my knowledge base here as a difference. And now we ask the exact same question again of the same model. And so we submit, and the answer comes back this time is much more applicable. It says, Llama Index is a tool or platform for, for connecting large language models to data sources. So you ask the question about multiple data sources. Llama Index is an example of this. Now, this was retrieved from the vector database, supplied to the model, and the model massaged the answer to be a more consumable piece of data. Now, alongside that, there's a whole bunch of source code examples, example RAG applications from NVIDIA that a data scientist could use to begin to start their process into retrieval augmented generation or large language models. And we will ship all this source code with the containers that come with private AI. Is, is private AI shipping now or is it something to come? The, the uh, add-on for private AI foundation with NVIDIA is coming uh, in the current quarter. So it's a, it's a product that you'll be able to buy very soon. Okay, so we won't get into source code here. I'd love to do that, but I, I can't do that in 15 minutes. There's a lot of great example. You know, NVIDIA has a lot of data scientists. VMware has a lot of data scientists. There's a lot of great examples to start you off here in your, in your efforts to do this, including optimizations using TensorRT. 
for example, to quantize your model down from 16 to 8. All of this is running on fairly old servers with two GPUs behind the scenes. These are A140G. These are three-year-old GPUs. And the, the particular virtual machine that you'll see, DLVM002 Harbor here, has both A100s attached to it. There's a little lesson behind the scenes here that you can attach more than one GPU to a VM and have it use that. As you can see here, these are virtual GPUs. Virtual GPUs are an NVIDIA concept, a VMware and NVIDIA concept, that will allow me to move this virtual machine around in the data center, even with GPUs attached to it if I wanted to, which is something that people do all the time in VMware. Now, that VM was created from an image that I brought down from the engineering team and I placed in a content library. The content library is a place to store virtual machine images in the VMware Cloud Foundation. My content library is called Private AI Foundation Deep Learning VMs here. And within that library, I see an OVA, uh, the basis for generating new VMs, a template for multiple VMs. So this is the deep learning VM template that I have as part of Private AI Foundation from which I can create a whole series of VMs for different data science. So, so the deep learning VM, for instance, Python solution would have pip installs of all the AI tools, TensorFlow, uh, you know. Correct. PyTorch and Correct. all its other NumPy, SciKit, things of that nature. Correct, and further to your previous question, a whole bunch of containers as well from the appropriate toolkits at NVIDIA. And we won't download them from NVIDIA live, I'm going to show you how we don't load them here in a second. So one, one clarification. Um, so Chris was saying you got 60 customers yeah. in the pipeline, but the offering doesn't really exist yet. Like, are they using something or is that just the main? Beta or something like well, that? Well, the, there are customers who have early adopter bits. Okay, so, so you have given it to these customers. Yes, okay. and, like and you know, the, the, ba stuff. the basis of all this is VMware Cloud Foundation plus NVIDIA AI Enterprise, which gives you the drivers. That's been out there with customers for several years now. Yeah. It's the new uh, LLM stuff that's, that's right. the, the difference. Right, and they're using it as a private beta right now, basically. Uh, right. Yeah. A, a very limited beta. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, Chris also mentioned that you're able to fire up an AI cluster in three seconds. With the model in memory, I mean, if I correctly I'm remembering what he said, is yeah. that that button on that panel that, that, you know, fire up an AI cluster and, and... It takes a little longer than three seconds to fire up these VMs, but we have done very, very lightweight, we have done very lightweight VMs with Ray clusters inside them. Ray is a very common platform. Server, in, yeah. And so we've done something special with Ray to allow you to do... Uh, linked clone type situation where there's a master VM that's alive all the time and creating a linked clone from it is a very fast operation. It's, it's a matter of seconds. So that's, that's, I think, the reference that Chris was, was giving you there. Uh, In your demo, you were showing a static file where you upload your own documents. Can you do also streaming documents where you continuously feed documents and your model kind of keeps on updating all the time? You can do that. And there, there are specific APIs in, in many of these platforms, including Nemo, for, for you to allow streaming. Right. You can do both stream in and stream out. So the response comes in a, in a series of outputs, not in just one output. Right. Yeah. So looking inside one of these deep learning VMs, this is very simple. It's just a Docker-based set of containers. But there's something interesting about these containers here. By the way, this is the, the Milvus vector database to answer your question about open source databases. Could we use that? I used exactly what NVIDIA gave me, and they gave me a, a vector database of open source. So I used it here. But this particular tag, harbor.isblab.vmware.com, refers to an internal harbor repository that you're seeing here. That harbor repository is a repository for container images, which gives me privacy. It means I'm not going out to the NVIDIA public repository to get my containers. I'm not going over the internet. I'm not accepting the latest container that happens to be out there. I have a specific container that I've tested and validated and made sure I understand what it's doing. And these are my, uh, my instances, my containers in the repository, making it private. So I get two benefits from this. I get the speed of download of these containers because it's all local, and I get complete privacy. These are private versions of the, of the NVIDIA containers. And you have the ability to select the data source. 
So if you did want to pull in external data, you could. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And in fact, the containers are one thing, but the model, the Llama 2 model, that came from Meta originally. I brought it down into a safe place, I tested it, and then I put it on my local HTTP server so that the VM being created would get it from there. So a little less academic now, a little more real? Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good. <laughs> okay, so that's deep learning VMs and a RAG application that uses them, but we're not finished yet. Uh, let me dismiss this one now and just give you another brief demo here. So now we're going to automate all of that. And to do that, we're going to use auto, uh, ARIA automation. And I'm going to skip over the login and go straight to the crux of the matter here. So, so here, we've created this tile, as I showed you before. And here's a data scientist making a request on that tile. And this is the only page I want the data scientist to see. I don't want them to worry too much about infrastructure concerns. I want them to go ahead and create this environment that they need in the simplest possible fashion. And as I said, it's not just data scientist persona here. It could be somebody like a DevOps person, a platform engineer that would be using this. The key decision they need to make is how much GPU power am I allowed to have? And I've allowed them to have two types of GPU power here, eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes. That's your lot. Now, I can restrict that or expand it as, C, uh, as, as is needed, but that's what I've done to this particular example. And given a user ID and user password, uh, I can actually have the data scientist say, I want to use my own bundle of tools here. I've got a bundle of tools set, set and ready to go. I don't want to use any of the bundles that you're supplying to me. I want to customize it. So once they hit submit on the bottom of the screen here and they send their request in, they're finished. The data scientist needs to do no more. We're going to do all of the provisioning uh, of the underlying VMs for them. So this takes more than three seconds, uh, <clears throat> but you know it's five minutes or thereabouts the, the, until the data scientist is ready to go. Is there a way that they can also script this? So they, they know they're building and rebuilding, can they run a script? Yes, I'm, I'm not showing the creation side of this. I created the tile and, and put the tile up there on the, on the user interface, on the service broker, but there is a whole scripting technology behind this. You're absolutely right to, to build it. Can the data scientists also, as they're setting up environments, are they able to? Yes, build? yes, they, they can do. And, and there's a graphical user interface for building these things as well, which is, um, which is built into ARIA automation. So yes, there are further demos of that. I decided with time constraints not to do all that. But here- One, one other question. Um, yeah. so, so ARIA automation here, we're talking about VCF, we're talking about another, like how many products do you have to buy to do this? Uh, one thing, one okay. SKU, one, okay. uh, the private AI foundation with NVIDIA SKU. You have to okay. buy VCF and then private AI. Yes, yes. You, okay, so two. The, the foundation is VCF, so it's, it, you know, we're, we're only talking to customers who are interested in VCF right now. So uh, I'll cut it short here. This is, this is the end result of all that. There are three ways to get into my environment. I can use Jupyter Lab at the top. I could use an SSH into the VM to see exactly what's going on in there. Uh, I'll just do, do the Jupyter Lab piece and stop there because that's, that's probably what most data scientists would be most interested in. Uh, Thank you for the nods for the acknowledgement. <laughs> so this is a very simple one. This is just using PyTorch. Torch is a library from Facebook, I think it was, or yeah. Twitter. Um, the original Torch and, and Python adopted it and called it PyTorch. This is a very simple piece of code that says, is CUDA working? Is the GPU working? And what's the result of this matrix multiplication? And matrix multiplication is what's happening all the time inside these large language models huge matrices being multiplied by other matrices. So uh, the data scientists got what they wanted here. They can SSH into their VM and see the details of what's going on inside that VM if they like. Uh, let me cut that short. That's, that's command line stuff that I love to use, but maybe not everybody likes oh, to do that. It. This is my favorite part. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, then we'll stay with it. Uh, is this so, real now and not recorded? 
So uh, if I could make this bigger, I would, but my screen's not responding. Okay. So I have one last demo that I'll I'll do for you. Is the whole VM per kind of data scientist deployment model what you see the most common in terms of your customer base, or are they talking about leveraging like kind of notebooks as a service running say across a bunch of shared infrastructure, uh, like on Kubernetes, for example? There's certainly discussion of that latter piece. Yes. Um, Notebooks are getting more and more sophisticated as we go further in time, and certainly we see demand for both types, both types of environment from our end users. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lastly, sixty seconds on GPU visibility. No more than that, I promise. Mm -hmm. um, so, as I mentioned, who is consuming the GPU and what are they doing with it becomes very important in these large language models because it's very typical to have two or more GPUs assigned to a single large language model operation. So we've got visibility here at the host level. The thing that's highlighted on the far left is a host, but we're also going to give you visibility at the VM level. So what we're doing here is looking at the GPU consumption in terms of the cores and the memory within it, and you have fine details of, of each GPU here to, to be looked at inside the vCenter user interface. So what I showed you. For some reason, the people I use GPUs with are all interested in power consumption. Yeah. In fact, I had that question yesterday from my own data center. You, you did want those two GPUs in our data center? No way. We don't have enough power. So yes, uh, power is a premium along with GPU memory, which seems to be a right. premium as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. OK. End of demos. Just a quick recap. What we saw there was an AI application, deep learning VMs, the building blocks, automation using ARIA automation to make that all simpler for a data scientist or DevOps engineer, and finally, visibility into GPUs as the underlying infra infrastructure technology.